The Finnish Civil War broke out on the 27th of January 1918 due to differing opinions about how the newly independent state should be governed. The population was split into two groups, which were the Whites and the Reds. Though most people tried to lead simple everyday lives, especially in the countryside, everyone was affected by the aftershocks of this division. People who were on opposing sides felt deep hatred toward the other, and the brutality created huge tension between them. The most extreme example of the brutality that was created due to the division of the people were the execution lists that had the names of people who were considered to be dangerous. These people were to be captured and executed regardless of the circumstances. Both sides had their own lists, and Oskar Yarvinen, who was a red, was on the whites list. Oletteko Järvinen? Hän sanoi, liitte yhdellä yhdessä, mitä hän olet nyt. Joo, nyt näin se ei jää. Vänttä nyt. Voisiko hän... Voisiko hän... Joo, tippa hän. Voisiko hän femti? Oletteko siis Oskar Järvinen? Oskar on mieheni. Tämä on Albert, meidän poikamme. Haa, aah... Due to the circumstances of the war, some details were overlooked. Decisions were made without much consideration and without proper investigations. Both sides had to react swiftly and quickly to get rid of the opposition as fast as possible. This resulted in mistakes, which included the wrong people being captured. What did you matter? Jag tror det. Oj, satan vad det här är shit. Lös, Perkele! Liku, 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 liku! Du är näst! Mutta miksi? This was a real story of one of the mistakes that had occurred. Albert Järvinen was captured and executed in the place of his father Oskar Järvinen, simply because they shared the same surname and that the soldiers were in a hurry. The death of Albert is a result of brutal and rash circumstances of the time, and his unjust death was not the only one of the kind. After the war, Hjalmar Alinder, the richest man in Finland, learns about cases like this one and he writes a letter to an editor in May 1918 in response to the unjust executions as well as the other brutalities that were occurring. Den röda galenskapen har efterträtt med den vita terrorn. Tusentals enkor och tiotusentals fadarlösa har missat sina försörjare och staten gör ingenting för att hjälpa dem. Vankileireillä kuolee vankeja, kun kärpäsiä ja yläluokka vain kohottaa olkiaan ja sanoo Antaa heidän kuolla. He ovat ansainneet sen. Man har rätt att kräva att överkassen har förståelse. Vad har det röda gjort som inte vi har gjort? Se on epäparlamentaarista, se on epärehellistä ja sitä ei kyetä tulevaisuudessa puolustamaan. Being a historian carries a lot of way with it. Historians and constantly researching the past asking questions like where, who and why. Basing their answers on evidence and critical analysis of that evidence, historians come to conclusions about the past. Unfortunately, it is never that easy. Every year, more information comes up to light and gets discovered. Information that might be used to strengthen previous knowledge or in many cases, completely falsify it. 
this is this can be sometimes very frustrating but it is important if we want the truth but nothing but the truth and as if discovering new evidence was not hard enough unfortunately there are also people who do not want historians and the general public to find the truth people who shape change and create false views about events and people of the past Yalmar Linder was a victim of such people. Due to conflicting ideologies with the mainstream views, Linder was falsely accused of many things like being a Russophilic and someone who doesn't love his own country. Back then, there was a big hate towards Russia, so people were very easily tricked to believe that Linder was an enemy. Behind these false accusations, were of course leaders who did not want Linder's ideas to spread like wildfire because they knew that he was right. Linder was forced to leave his own country. He was hunted by his own people and eventually all this sadness got to him and he decided to take his own life. All this because he was against violence on the Red Army prisoners. All this because he supported human rights for life under humane conditions. All this because he stood up for wrongful executions like Albert Yarbinens. Many years after, and with much more research being done and evidence being discovered, Linder is celebrated as a national hero. A hero who fought a battle against what was wrong. Today, we condemn the decisions and actions taken by the then leaders and today we support truth and freedom. So today we ask you, students, teachers, people of all ages, to get inspired by Linder's story and ask questions. Criticize what you think is wrong. With people around us constantly trying to put notions and ideas into our heads, it is very crucial that we stay open-minded. We owe that not only to Linder, but also ourselves. <laughs>